Hello and welcome. Today I wanted to shoot a video about a new Sabre feature that's making its way around the Sabre community right now. Uh, that feature is Smooth Swing. Now if you've never heard the term Smooth Swing before, that's probably because you haven't been in the corners of the Sabre community where this is the end-all be-all right now. Um, major manufacturers like Ultra Sabre, Sabre Forge, Vader's Vault are still using the boards that they've been using for a while. Proprietary boards, just new versions and they're not using this feature yet, but a lot of people are talking about it. Specifically, there's a new board called a Profi board that I'll shoot a video about uh, sometime fairly soon here that uses Smooth Swing, and uh, some of the other board makers are thinking about how they can incorporate it as well. So I wanted to take a moment to talk about what Smooth Swing is, uh, pros and cons, and how it differs from what you might be used to on a Sabre. So here in front of me, I have two different Sabres. Uh, this is a Dark Psy from Kaizen Saber that's equipped with a Nano Biscot board. Now, Nano Biscot board is something you'll find on the custom market. So again, if you're dealing with like Ultra Sabers or Saber Forge, it's pretty similar to uh, some of those boards that they use. Um, it's got a couple of sound fonts on it. It's got the ability to color change, but it uses a pretty much basic uh, Saber setup, just like everybody else does, or Saber sound setup. And then this right here, is the Boar's Saber from Pock Store. Now, Pock Store is usually um, some of the less expensive sabers. They're from Hong Kong. Uh, this is one of their higher end models, part of their Ultimate Works Saber set. So I'll be reviewing this a little bit later down the road as well. But this one is equipped with that Profi board that I talked about and Smooth Swing. So let me demonstrate the difference real quick here for you. Let's start with the standard one. Now this is running a Dark Saber sound font um, for obvious reasons, but uh, let me go ahead and boot this up. All right, so here we have the idle hum, and if I swing it, Now you notice on a standard Sabre sound setup like this, there's a threshold. Once the threshold of movement is passed, you get the swing effect. Until that threshold is passed, you just get the hum effect on the Sabre. So it's sort of an all or nothing proposition. Cross the threshold, get the swing effect, the swing, or the swing effect will sound and then reset, and then you'll have to trigger another swing effect. Now let me show you what smooth swing sounds like. Okay, so here's the hum effect. So if I swing it really hard, you notice that we're ending up, this is a much quieter sound font, but you notice that we end up with a very similar effect. It goes from the hum, swing, 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 clash. Okay, but watch what happens if I move the saber slowly. So that's what smooth swing is. Uh, instead of that threshold, uh, there really isn't a threshold. Once the saber detects movement, it brings in that swing font, but it lays it over the hum. And so the swing font starts off low and then picks up speed as the saber picks up speed. So the pluses to this is that the, uh, the saber movement is actually pretty highly realistic, especially if you're moving it slowly. And there's a depth of sound that you can get with the different motions of swing as opposed to the all-or-nothing proposition of a standard sound setup. Um, so that's pretty nice. The downside of that is because you don't have that threshold with a smooth swing, um, you don't have a threshold to meet, which means as long as the saber's moving, you're always going to have a little bit of that swing effect, which in a spin routine means that it's going to be solid swing effect all the way through. And if you've got a really interesting bass hum, you're not going to hear it too much be over the swing effect that's going on. So, all or nothing proposition and an always something proposition. Um, that's basically the difference between smooth swing. Now this is accomplished by uh, the Profi boards have a little smooth swing I and I file within the sound font that takes one of the swing effects and basically runs it through a program so that it can be ramped up or ramped down depending on the movement. Uh, I rather like the smooth swing sound effect, 
but after a while, prolonged use, it starts to get a little bit repetitive because the swing effect usually doesn't have the sort of depth of variety that the hum does. So on a lot of sound effects. So it kind of varies depending on your sound effect or your, uh, your sound font, rather. Uh, the swing effect that it picks also, it'll pick different ones. So you'll wave it around one direction, you can stop, wave it another direction, and you'll get a slightly different tenor to your swing. So that's smooth swing. Um, pretty nice feature. Uh, in most applications, it's a great step forward, but you don't get that sort of dramatic, uh, aggressive swing that you get with the all or nothing of a standard font. So hopefully that video or this video has been of use. If it has, please join me back for more and we'll take a closer look at this guy right here.